Father, we come to you again on this Lord's Day to continue to worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the message we had this morning on, on Isaiah's the Holy Bible in miniature. We thank you, Lord, as I said, that you uh, have these things in there for those that search them out, that, that you want us, that you tell us these, one of the things you said when you were walking here on earth, is you told the people that they need to study the words, to search the scriptures, that... Uh, you know, too many people, they just want to listen to what pastor has to say or somebody else on YouTube or something else. And, and they don't search the scriptures themselves. And, and that's why I try to give scripture and different things for, uh, to show what, what's out there. You know, that it's not my word, but it's, it's your word, Lord. And, and so, Father, we want you to get the glory and, and, and not, not uh, anything that I say. And so, Father, we just pray that you'll bless this service. Continue to be with each and every one. We uh, pray again for this nation that this nation will turn from that it's it's uh, sinful ways. You know, we saw with the assassination attempt of uh, President Trump, and 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 that um, you know it doesn't matter whether you like the guy, don't like the guy, whatever. That that's not the right way. You know, you, that that justice belongs to you, Lord, and that. Um, you know, it's, it's not for us to go and, and, and take out the leaders. And so, Father, we just thank you for providing him safety and and uh, to, to put your healing touch on him. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with each and every one and just uh, bless the service to be for those that are here and listening online. And we thank you for them. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be continuing our study in Revelation. This will be Revelation part 72. And you know, as I say many a times, all these things are just getting that much closer again. You know, just even what I mentioned uh, you know, about President Trump. Where, you know, if you just pay attention to what's going on with the politics or whatever, that, that uh, you know, just things that are going on around the world, you know, with Israel or, or, or whatever, you know, how people are, are getting more and more. Uh, against the Jewish people around the world, you know, we see more of that rising again, which, you know, that's going to have to happen because, you know, that's going to allow for the Antichrist to come on the scene and, and things like that. You know, we see um, the Muslims with their stuff going on around the world. We see how, you know, they're trying to do away with, with money around the world, all this, this AI, you know, this artificial intelligence trying to bring in stuff that, you um, you know, that they, they can be representative, you know, like for the Antichrist or somebody speaking, you know, that it looks like it's somebody else, things like that. You know, so we see all these things that are preparing for the uh, time to come that we're, we're, we're learning about here in Revelation. You know, the, the rapture is not that far away and, and the start of the tribulation is not that far away. People need to understand that if you're not saved, that today must be that day of salvation because, you know, it's not going to be that long. Before, you know, and before long, you're going to, it's going to be too late. You know, you can't, can't just think you can keep putting it off because there's no guarantee that you even have it tomorrow. You know, if you look around just within the last couple of weeks, there's been several well-known people, you know, whether Hollywood actors, people or politicians or whatever, you know, people that well-known in society, so to speak, whether, you know, it's not saying this or approve of all their things or whatever, but just they're well-known people. And some of these people were not that old that they were dying. That, um, you know, you don't know how long you have. So today is the day to get saved if you're not saved. But we've been looking in Revelation chapter 11, which, remember, is one of those little interlude chapters. And we started looking at the um, how they were going to rebuild the temple. And then there's this, God's going to have two witnesses that are going to appear on scene. And we already mentioned how that I believe that they're going to be Moses and Elijah. We already said, the scripture says Elijah's one of them, so we know that's one of them. And then the other dispute was whether who the second one was, you know, some say Moses and some say um, Enoch. And I showed you that, you know, it has to be Moses because it's all about the Jewish people and it, Moses represents the law and, and Elijah, the prophets and and, you know, all those different things that, that Enoch doesn't fit. The only thing that they use for Enoch is that, well, he never died. And I said, well, it's irrelevant because by the time these witnesses show up on scene, there's going to be a, millions of people that are going to be raptured that are never going to have died. So 
you know, that, that just doesn't, doesn't mean it. And then I said that there was people in the Old Testament that had been um, killed. You know, they had died or whatever. And then they were rose, rose, uh, resurrected by various people. And that, you know, of course, they went and died again, too. So, you know, people have died more than once. So, you know, they're just not looking at, you know, they're taking that out of context, whatever, and they're not looking at the big picture. So it's going to be Moses and Elijah will be these two witnesses. And we saw where, um, you know, that they were the, the two candlesticks or the olive trees that were mentioned in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 11 to 14. But it's, they, they're going to be there for three and a half years, 1,260 days, which again, that's, you know, biblical uh, year is 360 days. So that's three and a half years. And this will be at the beginning of the tribulation. So, but uh, we see there in verse five. So they're going to be there and they're going to be witnessing to the, to the people around you. They're going to try to get the Jews to understand that, hey, Jesus is the Messiah. You know, that the Antichrist is false. He's the enemy, and um, that they're looking at the wrong man, that they need to be, you know, looking for Jesus and not for the Antichrist. And so, you know, they're there to try to get to win the Jewish people. And obviously, Gentiles could get saved too, but, you know, their purpose really is to be bringing Israel to the Lord. You know, but I also mentioned that they're Old Testament saints and not the church, you know, that they're both Old Testament. You know, so, again, it, you know, they're, they're talking about the rapture. Well, the, the the church is one that gets raptured, not the Old Testament saints. So, you know, it doesn't even, um, there's so many things, like I said, it's definitely Moses. You know, we talked about them being on the Mount of Transfiguration together and so forth. But look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, this we're talking about referring back to the two witnesses, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So God will supernaturally protect these men for those three and a half years. You know, people will try to kill them, but God will not allow them to be killed for those three and a half years. You know, there will come a time at the end of that three and a half years, he will allow them to be killed. We're going to see that. But initially for three and a half years, no matter what, I mean, people could you know, open up fire on them with a machine gun or something, or they could do whatever, and they're not going to die. You know, that, that uh, God's going to supernaturally protect them. Now, if anyone tries to harm them, then fire will proceed out of their mouths and devour and destroy their enemies. Anyone who tries to hurt these men will be destroyed by fire. You know, so if someone does try to, to hurt them, they're just going to breathe fire out of their mouth, be like a, be a giant flamethrower, basically, and it's just going to devour up the person, kill the person, it's coming after them. So they'll just breathe out this fire and, you know, they're not going to get hurt. It's going to be the person that tries to kill them. They're going to be destroyed. So God will destroy any enemies that try to hurt them. Now, many will want them dead since they'll be convicting people of their sins. They will, and we will see that the people rejoice when they're dead. You know, the, these people, as I said, they're going to be, especially the Jewish people, they're going, to, they're going to be blinded. They're going to make this deal with the Antichrist. And, and they're going to be trying to tell the people, look, look what you guys are doing. You're rebuilding the temple over here. You made a deal with the Antichrist. You know, you're, you're not, you need to turn to Jesus. Jesus is your Messiah, not this Antichrist. And, you know, we don't need a temple. We need, you know, that the, Jesus already finished it on a cross and so forth. And they're going to be telling people that, you know, you're over here worshiping all this stuff and, and, and you know, these kind of things. And, you know, people don't want to hear that today, let alone later on when all this is going on. Because you got to remember, especially initially, there's not going to be very many believers. All the believers are initially going to get taken away in the rapture. And then shortly after that, whoever, then there'll be some others, they'll get saved or whatever. But for the most part, when they first appear on scene, there's not going to be all these believers on, on, on the earth. So, they're, they're, they're not, like today, you have other people that, you know, but they're, they're going to, People are going to get away with doing whatever they want because there's nobody going to be stopping them. You know, the so-called Christians and all that stuff. You know, all the real Christians are going to be gone. You know, and all the fake ones, at that point, they ain't going to be faking anymore. They're just going to go along with what the world does. They don't they don't have any reach to for the most part. So, you know, they might just initially for just a little bit. But so, you know, they're going to really be convicted of their sins. You know, they're going to be, they're not going to be, the thing is, they know they can't be killed. So there's no fear in them. They're not afraid of anything. 
And they're just going to say what God tells them to do. You know, they're, they're just going to, you know, people are not going to want to, going to like these people. You know, as I said, we'll see that they rejoice when they're dead. Revelation chapter 11, verse 6. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. You know, again, this is another referring to the two witnesses, some of their power. So they can breathe out fire, but then they also have this power to shut heaven, make it rain, not rain, and, and so forth, turn water to blood and, and uh, smite earth with all plagues and so forth. So verse 6 shows that the two witnesses, as I said, will have power to keep it from raining during the three and a half years of the prophecy and to turn water into blood and smite the earth with all plagues whenever they desire. So whenever they want, they can just do this. And now, uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, they're, they're just not going to rain for those three and a half years, just like it did in Israel there for, um, you know, under Elijah. And, you know, again, we, could just think of the disaster if you don't have this rain. How long it doesn't take long for things to dry up. You know, we moan and groan sometimes if it doesn't rain, oh, it hasn't rained in a month or you know, whatever, something. And you know, some places a lot less than that. It things are just they're not gonna be able to grow and all kinds of I mean, you know, that's it that that can lead to that's a that's a judgment or whatever in itself. That that's that's a uh, you know, things get all dusty when the wind starts blowing, things are all dried up, and you know, it's just you know, right there, that's a bad thing in itself. But now, as I mentioned, these are the same miracles performed by Moses and Elijah. You know, that was one of the things when I said it had to be Moses and not Enoch also, because if you look at the miracles here, then these are the miracles that Moses and Elijah did. You know, Enoch didn't do any of these miracles. It doesn't even mention him even doing any miracles, period. Now, I'm not saying he did it, but Scripture doesn't mention him doing any. Now, if you remember, as I just said, Elijah stopped the rain for three and a half years, the same time as it will be stopped again by these two witnesses during the tribulation. If you would, keep your finger here, whatever. Go back a couple books, a few books to uh, James chapter 5, verse 17. So James chapter 5, verse 17. You know, if you remember in 1 Kings, it talks about Elijah. It tells the story about him doing that. And Ahab gets all mad because he stopped this rain for... Um, you know, three and a half years, and and then and then uh, Elijah tells him, you know, it's it's not me. It's, you're the one responsible for this because it's of your sin and so forth. That that's why this rain has been withheld. But James chapter five verse seventeen. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. Of course, and Elias here is talking about Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So, you know, God was listening to him. Go to 1 Kings 18, and we'll just quickly look at it there. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse, uh, verse 42. It's not what I'm really looking for, but this is when the rain comes back. And I was trying to see where Ahab, uh, you know, was complaining to him about no rain. But anyway, if you go to chapter First uh, Kings chapter 18, this is after they just had the the thing with um, the prophets of Baal, and they burned the the um, you know see who's the real God. You know, they called down fire from heaven. And, you know, fire comes down from heaven and so forth, and, and, and they accept Elijah's uh, thing. But, um, yeah, this isn't really what I was looking for. But like I said, it just talks about how the rain. What's that? How about 17 more? <clears throat> yeah. Um, and Elijah, the uh, first Kings chapter 17, verse 7, uh, 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. 
Now, you know, it doesn't, if I remember, I guess I don't think it actually says in 1 Kings how long it was, but we know there from James that it was for three and a half years. You know, he just says years there. But the, uh, the point is, you know, we see that Elijah did that miracle. Uh, that, that's one of the miracles that they're going to be able to do is withhold this rain. Now, Moses was used by God to bring the ten plagues upon Egypt, with one of those being turning water into blood. You know, if you you know, we're not going to go and look at those, but if you remember the um, the ten plagues, you know, where they were, God calls Moses back so that he can get his people out of Israel, and you know, he has them deliver these ten plagues upon Egypt. Now, one of them was that he was going to turn water into blood. Let's see if I can quickly find it. Um, if I remember, it was first plague. Yeah, let's see here. Um, Exodus chapter 7, verse uh, 20, or actually verse 19. Well, actually it's verse 17. Right? Go to Exodus chapter 7, verse 17. So Exodus chapter 7, verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are on the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And then, you know, verse 19, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood. You know, verse 20, it, it says, uh, And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. You know, it goes on and on. But that, you know, and that was the very first plague. So, you know, we see, and then, but they're going to be able to do, basically it sounds like any of those 10 plagues that they did, they'll be able to do those on smaller scales or whatever, you know, and the same thing to the land of Israel this time, probably. You know, I mean, they might be able to do it around the world, but definitely probably at least in Israel. And, um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't around the world. But they'll be able to do those things, you know, the frogs, the the uh, killing the cattle off or the hail or, or um, you know, all those different uh, plagues, you know, the lice, you know, the dust and the lice and those kinds of things. Remember, there's going to be a lot of dust. If you don't get rain for three and a half years, there's going to end up being a lot of dust. So, you know, there'd be a lot of lice and so forth. So, you know, we, we see that these miracles that they're going to be able to do, that it matches what Moses and Elijah did. Now, why would it be Enoch as a witness instead of Moses when all things point to Moses? As I said, there's nothing that they have. The only argument that they have for Enoch is the fact that he never died and neither did, did Elijah. You know, they were both types of the rapture. But as I said, that's irrelevant because I've already shown you that many are not going to die during the, the rapture they're, and the real rapture, that are millions are not going to die. And then I already said that how some people have died in the Old Testament and then they died again. You know, they got brought back to life. Well, <clears throat> obviously, they're not still alive now. They're, they're dead. So they obviously had to die twice. And um, so, you know, to sit here and say, well, you know, Moses died, which we know he died because God buried himself. <laughs> And it tells you in Jude how even the archangel Michael didn't uh, dispute with Satan over the body of Moses. You know, Mo uh, Satan was wanting the body of Moses and so forth. And so, I mean, there was no doubt that he had physically, his earthly body had died. But, you know, that does, so that doesn't mean, I mean, like I said, we're going to see Moses is going to die a second time. I mean, if it, you know, I, you know, if it's him, which I believe it is, you know, the two witnesses will later on get killed. So it's, um, but, I mean, the point is that all these things point to all the things, different things I've mentioned. Everything points to Moses being that second witness along with Elijah. Now look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So once the three-and-a-half-year ministry is completed... 
then God will allow the Antichrist, who is the beast from the bottomless pit, to finally be able to kill these men. You know, we saw there that they were not able to be, you know, anybody that, that tried to hurt them in verse 5, they would be destroyed by, they'd breathe fire out of their mouths and kill them. So for those three and a half years, they're invisible. Nobody could touch them. But at the end of that ministry, you know, it says here that um, when they shall have finished their testimony, though, that's their, their ministry. You know, they preach for three and a half years, tell everybody, warn everybody about the Antichrist, all this kind of stuff. Then they're done. So their time is up. Now God says, okay, we're going to let them have their little joy for, you know, a few days. And then I'm just going to take you home. So the, the, the beast comes out of the bottomless pit. You know, again, now that's the Antichrist. You know, the beast, the Antichrist is often referred to as the beast in Revelation. And, you know, of course, Satan's going to, you know, behind all of them. And so they finally are able to kill him. So Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So their dead bodies will lie in the street of Jerusalem. You know, we know it's Jerusalem. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But the people will not even have the decency to bury them, but rather want to gloat over their dead bodies. I mean, I can see that now, you know, CNN and, you know, MSNBC, all these liberal channels and all over the world and stuff. They're all going to be, be um, you know, focused on these bodies. And they'll probably have a live, you know, it's like the Roman Catholic Church. They'll do that in some of their churches well, they'll have a um, continuous camera that, that watches a um, one of the little <coughs> wafers, you know, the wafer God for you know, the Eucharist, you know, that they claim is Jesus and all this and that, 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 you know, so that they can, they can admire them and, and, and bow down and worship to Jesus through the Internet and, you know, watch, watch this thing all the time, 24 hours a day. So, you know, they don't have to actually go to the church and so forth. But I could see that it'd be something like that, that they'll be having this thing constantly. You can just sit there and, and, and watch it live on either TV or the internet or whatever. And, um, you know, they'll just focus on these bodies. Like, look, see, they're dead. Now those two, they've been haunting us and, and bugging us for the last three and a half years. And now finally we were able to kill them. That, you know, see, see, and they'll try to probably gloat like, see, Satan is, is much greater than their God because their God can only protect them for so long. But finally we prevail. But they're going to find out that, that, um, how wrong they are, but but now we know we know they are in Jerusalem. Since it said, well, first of all, just the fact that they don't bury me there again, that just shows <coughs> what kind of people they are. I mean, to me, first of all, if it was my enemies, I, I wouldn't even want them to be left out there for the animals to get them. I mean, it's one thing maybe throw them off in the woods, we didn't see them, but they're my enemies. I don't even want to see them. I'd want them buried, so I wouldn't even have to look at them, but. And I guess they're different. But anyway, they, uh, but we know they are in Jerusalem since it says in the city where our Lord was crucified, which we know was Jerusalem. Obviously, if you read the, all the Gospels, you know, all the end, you know, it, it talks about Jesus getting crucified. We know he was crucified in Jesus. And it says right here that they're in the street of the great city. Well, in God's eyes, who, what's the great city? You know, we think of great cities as being like, you know, New York City, you know, London you know, Paris or whatever, you know, all these great cities around the world that, um, you know, you think of. But in God's eyes, what's the one great city? It's Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem doesn't going to come close population-wise or something like that to some of these other cities or, def or doesn't have uh, the resources or doesn't have all the stuff like some of these other, quote, what uh, man thinks are great cities around the world. But, you know, in God's eyes, it's that great city. So, you know, we see that. They're lying there in the street. You know, God calls it Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, the mention, but we see how Jerusalem is, is compared to Sodom and, and Egypt, which were always full of sin and enemies of God. You know, Sodom, of course, was destroyed along with Gomorrah and the other towns there around it that, um, you know, for sodomy and, you know, the sin of homosexuality and, and so forth. And, you know, so they, they were they were always an enemy of God. Then we see that Egypt, of course, Egypt is what we just mentioned. That's where, you know, Moses had those 10 plagues against them. You know, that uh, that's where Egypt, you know, the Passover comes from. That's when the Israelites escaped from Egypt and God took them out of there, part of the Red Sea and so forth. 
but you know, Egypt was always known, you know, for, for its sin, you know, that, that people always seemed to, when they wanted to get away from God, they'd always run off to Egypt, it seemed like, or something, you know, remember when uh, the people in, in uh, Jeremiah's day, then they didn't want to listen to him, and you know, Jeremiah's like, well, you know, God said, just, if you just listen to what Babylon says, Babylon's going to come in here, going to take us over, but if you just listen to them, you will survive the captivity and so forth. But they didn't want to listen. They were like, well, we ain't going to have Babylon captors. We're going to run off to Egypt. You know, they're afraid of dying in battle and these kind of things. And, and Jeremiah told them, said that, you know, God says you do all that. All those things you're afraid of, those are what I'm going to bring to Egypt. And that's what's going to happen. But, you know, people would run there. You know, so we see the, the comparison there of, of those things. But the mention of Egypt also goes along with Moses as one of the two witnesses. You know, as I said, you know, Moses was behind the 10 plagues. So, again, it just, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it's another clue God's trying to tell us of who one of the witnesses here, that, you know, with the connection of Egypt. You know, Enoch's not related, you know, any kind of connection to Egypt. Egypt wasn't even around at the time when Enoch was, you know, walking on the earth. You know, once he got taken away, you know, Egypt came along after that. So did Sodom. So, but like I said, so we know that this, this is talking about Jerusalem. And, you know, and if you refer to it, it says, you know, as it says, spiritually it's called Sodom and Egypt. You know, so it's not saying that this great city is Sodom or Egypt. It's just saying, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you have, you call New York City the Big Apple or you call uh, L.A. the City of Angels or you know, Chicago the Windy City or whatever, you know, Detroit Motor City or something like that. You know, they, they have these names for them. Well, you know, or, or you call or like Las Vegas, good one is Las Vegas, call it Sin City. You know, that's not something I'd be proud of, you know, ha uh, have my name called Sin City. But that's exactly what these were, that, that um, Jerusalem had become so wicked, you know, that people had so turned away from God that, um, you know, that's why the temple was destroyed and so forth over the years, because they had turned into idolatry and they had all these other things, you know, they had turned away from God. You know, they become like, like Sodom and Egypt. You know, they, they've taken all their false gods and their sins and so forth. And so spiritually, you know, it was still Jerusalem, but they had the sin of those kind of places. And so that's what, you know, uh, God was trying to say. But so he's giving us a clue of where these people, you know, the two witnesses will be. Now, like I said, they're going to be there in Jerusalem. Now, their word's going to get broadcast all over the world, so everybody's going to see it. But they're going to be there in Jerusalem. We'll pick it up in verse 9 next week, and we're going to see that uh, how the people are going to rejoice over this. So we'll, we'll um, like I said, we'll pick it up next week, but let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us here to once again study your word in Revelation. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. We thank you, Lord, for the understanding you give us here. You give us an insight of some of the things that are going to be coming up here in the near future, you know, dealing with the tribulation and so forth. And, and we thank you even for those little clues you give us there that, in my opinion, like I said, I definitely think it's Moses. And I think even the little thing like Egypt and some of those things are just another clue. And it, it's not to uh, that we were to be mean to our brethren that, that believe it's Enoch, but I just do not believe in any way, shape, or form, that there's too many clues that, that match up for, for Moses and not for Enoch. And, and and we see how wicked the people are, that they just leave them in the streets and, and they gloat over them. And, and um, you know, I could see them going up there and they're spitting on them, probably sticking a poker into them and doing something or just trying to torture their bodies or, you know, who knows what they're doing. I, I could just see all this kind of stuff going on, you know, urinating on them or whatever who knows what they'll end up doing and so father we just see how sinful man really is and, and we know that as i said we're getting so close to those times and so we pray lord that the people might be convicted and start paying attention to some of the signs that are going on around them that um they'll they'll see these things before it's too late that you know you don't want to be missing the rapture and going through this tribulation. you don't want to be here on earth when those two witnesses are around, because it's not going to be a pleasant time. We see there's going to be rain withheld and all this other stuff's going to be going on. So, Father, we just pray that you'll bless the rest of the day and bless the week. Just uh, put a hedge around each and every one of us, keep us all healthy and safe, and just bring justice where wrong has been done. 
And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.